Welcome back. In this tutorial, we will understand how to calculate profitability. First, we will understand return on capital. In business, the main return from business activities is profit. Profit being the difference between total revenues and total costs. But in order to earn a profit, most businesses have to invest. Invest, for example, in inventory, stocks, warehouses, and maybe production facilities and capacity if they are involved in manufacturing of. Of course, other businesses may be not involved in manufacturing also or still need to invest in distribution capabilities. The calculation for return on capital employed roasts is typically expressed as a percentage and is done by dividing the operating profit of the business, often referred to as the operating profit or occasionally the net profit by the capital employed in the business. Capital employed is defined as the total equity in the business which can be found on the balance sheet plus the non-current liabilities. Both of these figures are obtained from the balance sheet while operating profit is sourced from the income statement or profit and loss account. After performing this division, the result is multiplied by 100 to express rows as a percentage. This example illustrates the computation of return on capital employed rows for two hypothetical companies, Company X and Company Y. Company X reports non-current liabilities of £500,000 while its equity comprises share capital of €1 million Euros and retained profits of £250,000 totaling £1.25 million. With an operating profit of 400000 IBS, its rows is calculated at 22.8%. On the other hand, Company Y possesses a higher equity of £5.5 million consisting of reserves worth £4.5 million and share capital of £1 million along with non-current liabilities of £700,000. Despite its larger operating profit of £600,000, Company Y's roast stands at 18.7%, reflecting the significant capital employed. This discrepancy underscores how roast is not solely influenced by profit, but also by the extent of capital investment, portraying a crucial aspect of financial performance assessment. Important points should be noted down. Return on capital employed, ROS, is a financial ratio companies use to gauge their performance. ROS is an indicator of a company's efficiency because it measures the company's profitability after factoring in the capital used to achieve that profitability. The formula for ROS is earnings before interest in taxes EBIT, divided by the capital employed. Investors and analysts often use ROS as a useful tool when researching a company as a possible investment. ROS is particularly effective in comparing companies in capital-intensive industries, such as oil and gas companies. Now we will learn about operating profit margin. Operating profit encompasses not only the difference between sales revenue and the cost of sales, known as gross profit, but cost of sales also considers additional operating expenses such as marketing or rent and rates. To illustrate, let's Consider an example where sales revenue totals £500,000 and the cost of sales is 100000 IBS, resulting in a gross profit of £400,000. However, this isn't the final profit as we must deduct other operating costs, say £300,000 to arrive at an operating profit of 100000 IBS. The operating profit margin, a crucial profitability ratio, is expressed as a percentage and is calculated by dividing the operating profit by the sales revenue, then multiplying the result by 100. This ratio provides insight into the percentage of sales revenue converted into operating profit. For instance, if our operating profit is 100,000 IBS and sales revenue is 500,000 pounds, the operating profit margin would be 20%. This indicates that for every £100 of sales revenue, the business earns £20 of operating profit. Analyzing changes in the operating profit margin over time is vital. A decrease may signify various factors such as a decline in gross profit margin or higher operating costs, both of which impact profitability. Conversely, an increase in the operating profit margin could result from an improved gross profit margin or better control of operating costs, potentially indicating enhanced business performance. 
Understanding operating profit and its margin is crucial for assessing a business's S profitability and competitiveness. Monitoring changes in these metrics over time and comparing them with industry benchmarks and competitors' performance can provide valuable insights into a business's financial health and efficiency. Now coming to limitations, discrepancies in operating, profit margin among peers may stem from various factors such as differences in business strategies like outsourcing versus in-house production. Differences in depreciation methods, such as double declining balance versus straight line, can influence operating profit margins, with the former potentially leading to lower margins initially that increase over time. When comparing companies, it's essential to maintain consistency in factors like geography, company size, industry, and business model to ensure accurate analysis. Consideration of other profitability metrics like gross profit margin and net profit margin, as well as financial metrics such as leverage, efficiency, and market value ratios, can provide a comprehensive understanding of a company's financial health. Further knowledge in financial analysis and corporate finance can be acquired by exploring additional aspects detailed in related articles. And last but not least, gross profit margin. Gross profit margin is the profit after subtracting the cost of goods sold, COGS. Put simply, a company's gross profit margin is the money it makes after accounting for the cost of doing business. This metric is commonly expressed as a percentage of sales and may also be known as the gross margin ratio. So for example, if we had sales revenues of say £400,000 and the cost of those sales was £150,000 then the gross profit is simply the difference between sales revenue and cost of sales so £400,000 less £150,000 gives us a gross profit of £250,000 that's not the total profit of the business. Because we need to take off other costs such as overheads but it's a really important measure of profitability. Gross profit is the total profit a company makes after deducting the cost of doing business. Put simply, gross profit is a company's total sales or revenue minus its COGS. This figure is expressed as a dollar value. Gross profit margin, on the other hand, is the profit a company makes expressed as a percentage using the formula above. It is one of the key metrics analysts and investors watch as it helps them determine whether a company is financially healthy. Companies can also use it to see where they can make improvements by cutting costs and or improving sales. The sales and COGS can be found on a company's income statement. A high gross profit margin is desirable and means a company is operating efficiently while a low margin is evidence there are areas that need improvement. Simple example at the start of this video the gross profit divided by the sales revenue the gross profit we worked out was £250,000 divided by the sales revenue of £400,000 always expressed as a percentage so times by 100 that gives us a gross profit margin of 62.5% now the gross profit margin is one of those margins that is really worth. Lastly the key takeaways from this are, gross profit margin is an analytical metric expressed as a company's net sales minus the cost of goods sold. Gross profit margin is often shown as the gross profit as a percentage of net sales. The gross profit margin shows the amount of profit made before deducting selling, general, and administrative costs, which is the firm's net profit margin. Thank you for listening. You can also check out other important tutorials available at our channel. If you've ever laughed, learned, or just slightly nodded during this video, do me a favor and give it a like. Let's create a virtual high-five moment. Stay tuned.